Hello and welcome to my advanced Roland guide. So this is an advanced guide for the unit Roland aka Horseman Central. So how do you use Roland in a way that is beyond normal play? So <laughs> that was all random that had that rhyme. But anyways, how do we, what's going on with Roland? What do we want to do with Roland? All right, so in the previous video I did Sarah Noah. Uh, so the first thing to do would be to just go over the abilities uh, and like why they're useful and when. So the first ability, Knight's Bane, that's a passive. You take more damage from spears, be aware of that. Um, Alright, so he generally has three TP abilities. So if I actually have him... Wait, let's start the mission, that would help. <laughs> like in selection. So he has, he has an either or ability. He can either make double thrust cost one TP, which is okay for single target nuking for cheap, uh, or he can cause rush to cost uh, two TP instead of three. So let's have, uh, let's have Maxwell go over here and just like pull some of these, just kind of chill out. All right, so Roland. So if you use rush TP minus one, he effectively has three TP abilities. And each one of these has a use case uh, so you can see Rush is a, is a lane nuke AoE. He can hit up to three targets. He also will move if the height difference between his starting tile and ending tile isn't too much different. So you can see here plus or minus two. Uh, and then for double thrust, this is his highest single target damage attack. Um, well, for two TP, four dragons hits harder. Uh, but you can cause it to be... Like, you can make it cost one with the, with his ore ability, but I would say rush is better. Because generally, when you want to spike something, you want to either push back or four dragons it anyways. So double thrust is probably going to be your least used ability. Rush is probably going to be one of the ones you'll be using most commonly. Uh, pushback is also extremely good. The reason pushback is usually better than double thrust is because the damage is very similar. You're talking about a difference of like 20 damage and if pushback just pushes an enemy into another enemy or into a wall you will deal more damage than double thrusting and if you push them off of high ground this will be his cheapest single target damage spike so keeping those things in mind every turn with roland as long as you have two tp which is pretty easy to get on him because he can loop around to batteries and i'll go over that in a second um, he can he has options he can push back he can aoe so he has like two single target nukes he has, a, he has a single target nuke against isolated enemies not near walls or cliffs. He can push things off a of high ground, and he can rush. He can also use Flash of Steel to hit really far out. He can up to five targets. You can see that the height difference for Flash of Steel is a little bit more lenient. It's plus or minus five versus Rush. So generally, Flash of Steel, like you can see here, if I look at Rush, and I look at Flash of Steel, um, the height difference isn't too crazy. Let's actually move him. Uh, let's see if we can simulate this. So let's go here. So rush, in this case it's actually letting me rush all up and down these because it's like within, these are all just like one tile, like one height. So we would need something higher to kind of demo this. Let's see, this is a perfect example. We should be able to, yeah, so check this out. So look at rush, you can see I can hit everything on the flat, but not on that elevated uh, column there or that little like piece of the railing like whatever the actual name of it is. But if we go to Flash of Steel, uh, not only is the range increase, that's the main reason you use it, but it's actually quite crazy how it works because you can see there that it'll actually hit, it's like trying to hit those tiles down there. Uh, those are out of bounds, but based on the height difference, so the starting height is eight. It's, oh, this is height two, it's like bugged. It's like height two, so it's actually able to hit that. Uh, because it is minus... Actually, no, that doesn't even make sense. It should be 3. Well, hold on. Let me see. Oh, okay. I'm on height 7. Okay, but if I go to this one... Yeah, there we go. Okay, so because I'm on height 7... So you can see here, it will hit those tiles if those were walkable. Those are actually underneath. They're not on the water. Those are height 2. But it has it, it can be pretty crazy, but going to hit things on high ground. So you wouldn't think it can, but it can because it has plus 5. So I can hit things on those, if like those trees were walkable high ground, or even that one thing that is walkable high ground, this tile right here, you can hit something on there. So that's the main difference between those. Flash of Steel has similar damage, so it does 218, Rush is doing 210 in this case. Uh, that's without 
Like, if we actually look in-game, though, like, it actually has... We have different values, I believe. Yeah, the values are a little bit higher. So, you can see here, Flash of Steel, 245, Rush, 236. So, Flash of Steel does a little bit more damage, has better range, um, and can hit with higher height. Rush is better just for, like, quick back crit damage. So, the use case for them, they're kind of, like, polar opposites, in my opinion. You generally want to use them in a way where, like, you always want to get back crits if you can, but I would say Flash of Steel, you're generally going to be using it on enemies that are approaching your team and just hitting them from the front. And then Rush, there's like a specific build for it. So let me see. Okay, I'm running a Flash of Steel build right here. Or I just have Res Earring and Speed Bracelet. Uh, but you generally want to use Movement Bangle uh, on him if you're going to be using a Rush build. So, okay, so we've gone over the basic attacks. And then there's also four Dragons. This does really high... Single target spike, this is good on against bosses, this is good against tanks. It ignores armor as well, so it just deals like straight up damage. Uh, it's still reduced by hard mode difficulty, uh, but it will deal really high damage, so something to keep in mind. So overall we have uh, single target spike, AoE damage, single target spike, pushback, knock things off high ground, uh, more can like more range AOE, slightly increased damage, can hit higher up, and then single target spike. And then he also has, I keep hitting X on accident, sort of Y. He also has um, opportune attack. So if you move five tiles or more, and then attack something, he'll get an extra free chip damage attack in. Uh, his spear also hits two things by default. And when he is in good weather, he has seven move, otherwise he has six. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here, is I'm actually going to retreat really quick. I'm just going to give him movement bangle and I'm going to show his rush build. I'm going to have Eridor draw some enemies' attention. So he has... Basically he has like three big use cases. He has his flash of steel build, he has his rush build, and he has his boss killing and just like, you know, general damage dealing. Um, like, the Rush build still uses some of the other abilities, and the Flash of Steel build still uses other abilities, but th this is, like, the general, like, setup for it, so... Uh, let's go to Unit Placements. We'll just hit Y on Roland. Alright, so... You generally want to put Res Earring on him. If you're running him with Maxwell, or if you're running him as a flanker, um, I'll go into that later, um, he wants Res Earring just in case. If you play, like, around his kit well, you shouldn't need Res Earring, but it's nice to have because his durability is moderate, but it's not like, he's not like a tank. So the main, the main problem people run into with Roland is they use him like a bruiser, and he's not. He's really like a, he's really like a spike character. Like, he, he wants to get behind enemies and nuke them. So most people tend to use him as a bruiser. All right, let's get this going. Well, I'll show, like, the three different setups. This first one is the rush setup. Um, he wants to nuke things, he wants to get in, he wants to get out. So, with Movement Bangle, he has 8 move. If you move, if you run, if you, like, loop around things and then rush towards your teammates, um, he effectively has 12 move in this situation. So, what we'll do is we'll get, like, Maxwell, we'll just put him here. Uh, we'll just have Roland. I'm gonna in tandem Eridor really quick. Just to, like, get him out there, because he's kind of slow. And I'm just trying to demo this, so... Uh, we'll just have Roland pass. This will take a few turns to do. Uh, what we'll do, we will... We'll battle cry him just to get him the King Shield. Normally what I would do is I'd just set this up normally, but... We'll just King Shield just to get a few enemies. Uh, we have to... Alright, so one thing to do when playing around Roland is you want to be able to calculate out what the enemies are going to do. So, for example, um, this probably will attack Maxwell. And if this gets Furied, obviously it'll attack Eridor. These will definitely attack Eridor, but they'll probably, like, you know, they won't really move up. So, you want to be able to calculate his move out, so it's clear weather. Most maps are clear weather, so it's not the worst thing in the world for it to, you know, there to be, like, weather or something. There's, like, very few cases of this. So, if I move here, uh, Roland has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then that gets him an opportune attack, and then he can back crit an enemy that pushes me here. If I move here... Uh, he would want to end up on this square. Um, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's nine tiles away. So the furthest I can move up with Eridor to have 
um, rolling to hit both of these would be like here. Uh, so one thing I can do is I'll light wave Eridor um, here. We'll king shield to get a guaranteed fury. And then we'll move back here. Um, yeah, and I'll show why. So, all right, these will just pass, doesn't matter. Cool, we got some enemies lining up. It's great. <laughs> it's great. They'll go for him because he has low magic. Uh, this is feared, it has to go for him. Okay. All right, we'll just wait for some of these turns. This is an example of the rush build, so... All right, and then one thing we can do with Julio is Moment of Truthing Roland is huge. You can have him rush every single turn with damage boost, so it can be good. Uh, and then one thing you want to do is make sure that he has an escape route. So when you rush, if he's rushing from here, he'll travel one, two, three tiles and end up on the fourth tile. So he'll hit both of these for back crits and end up here. So Julio can just move up if he wants to. It doesn't really matter. So I should be able to rush around these. Uh, we have some enemies approaching Frederica who can't die. We'll just put her in a corner. I'm just, like, briefly demoing this. Uh, Maxwell. Um, what can he do? I can't really high jump. I guess I could do something like this. Oh, wait. I can't. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> I wanted him to jump to here and then hit these and then move, but that's not going to be possible. He'll be in Roland's way, essentially. Uh, Roland couldn't make this distance. Um, one thing I could do is, like, this or something. Get some combo off. I'm not really, like... Okay, so... Alright, okay, so the ice messed us up. That's unfortunate. So this ice tile, the enemy's putting ice down, actually completely... Not the completely ruined this, but... Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. We can still hit two things. The ice tiles are kind of random. Like, it's it's not common that this would happen. I, sh I guess I should have checked these guys' magic spells. But the, the ice tile is preventing him from hitting this tile. So that's unfortunate. Uh, we can still, however, do this, though. We can rush a bad way. Or alternatively, um, you can flash of steel from here for some damage. Um, yeah, that's really annoying. Actually, we can do this. Let's see. I'm surprised that's only hitting this much damage. Usually, oh, it's not his back. <laughs> okay, that's why. I thought that was his back. Never mind. He's facing sideways for reasons. We could probably nuke this guy down. Yeah, there we go. This should be lethal, I think. Yeah, so he can just do shit like that. Like even if you if your rush gets messed up you, and you ha and you're sitting on TP, because he only really needs two TP. Uh, so we're gonna what we're gonna do here? We want to provoke. We want to provoke a bunch of stuff. That's what Aridor is good at. Let's provoke all this. Get one of these mages provoked. They're kind of annoying me with their their ice. Like literally just ruined a turn uh, for a use case. But we showed that he can still do something even if he can't get his rush off. He can just straight up one shot a guy. <laughs> so like, you know, I, I feel uh, reasonable about that. It looks like we have another rush set up. All right, so what Julio can do here, uh, he's just going to do, he'll just heal. I'm, in, I'm, I'm running a few units just to show, like, this thing. We're going to get the rush off, though, so. Uh, Frederica. Sure, just hit this guy. All right, you can't. Can you? All right, I guess scorch him. Whatever. <laughs> Skip through these turns. We're just trying to get to the... The meat and potatoes. So you can see there he took two hits and is still like at 33%. And he still has res. And this is with like running fewer units and no healers. Uh, she'll just pass. It doesn't matter. I'm just trying to show this. Uh, okay, in this case, best thing to do would probably this. Just nuke this down. Alright, so. So here we actually have an option. So one, two, three, four, five tiles rush. So we get a back crit follow-up, or we get a back crit opportune attack. We crit both of them, and then we also trigger a follow-up attack. So this is the main use case for the rush build, is either setting these up, and then also catching heal and tank from your back line while you're shutting things down. Um, uh, Medina's tired of this guy. 
she let me know that he needs to go. Let's just hit him with some damage. It's not the most damage, but we'll take it. <laughs> this guy's about to nuke both of them. <laughs> if Frederica dies, we lose, so... I'll, just, I'll have to probably reset, but it's fine. Okay, and then Eridor can just continue doing Eridor things. So the big upside of rushing, and even Flash of Steel in this case, is I can Flash of Steel four things now, trigger a follow-up attack, and get two back crits, and that's pretty big damage. And then one thing I can do with Julio is I can just have him Inheritor um, roll in so that he just has, like, you know, easy Flash of Steel. Now, obviously, if I was running, like, a Turn Accelerator, a Benedict or something, this would be huge. Uh, we do want to have Eridor get healed because he's getting kind of low there, but that <laughs> dude, that, they're all just like, he should just stab them. Okay. We can still Flash of Steel four of them, though, so let's scorch these. And then run for our lives. There's some more enemies, that's nice. We're running like six units or something, so that's whatever. <laughs> Alright, he's moving. They're moving and grooving. Alright, Maxwell. Uh, he might as well just heal. So I was told that if he heals two things, he two bird one stones. Let's see. Oh, he does. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> if it heals, though. If it doesn't heal, it doesn't trigger. But it's neat. that's neat. All right, so in this case, we could we could rush and kill two of these. We could also Flash of Steel. Um, so you have options. Um, the Flash of Steel hits that, that target back there. And also with Rush, it does move us, so if we need to reposition, the rush build is really good to be to, to use with an Eridor, so you can reposition. Um, alternatively, one thing we can do is we can get a Flash of Steel here. We can hit two back crits, trigger... This, this is one thing that I pointed out that some people were like mocking, like, oh, we can trigger so many follow-up attacks, and it's like, he can, and it's good. So, back crits, look at all this, look at all this damage, this is ridiculous. He gets free opportune attack back crit. He gets two back crits. He gets two follow up attacks. Then he hits another unit from the side. So this like this there's this like argument that people think Roland sucks, but I think people just don't understand how to use him in a team. So when you understand how to use him in a team, he's actually extremely good. Um, so that's rush build, right? And this and when you're using rush build or flash of steel build, you can use rush or flash of, flash of steel as needed. Obviously in this case, flash of steel, you know, two follow up attacks killing an enemy, getting big damage off. That's really useful. That's always useful. And Eridor, without a healer and without extra tank, is able to just tank all of these units. So, like, it's very easy to set up, and you can just run Eridor with Roland, and they're a really good combo team. And also, Eridor balls up enemies for your mages, so you can't go wrong doing it. So that is the, the rush build. Uh, let's go, let's retreat. I'll show Flash of Steel. So you, you want the movement plus one bangle, and you want Res Earring, because Res Earring gives you a safety net so that if you overextend, he can survive and tank a little bit extra, than, like more so than you would expect normally. And you want the movements because you need to be able to reposition behind things to spam rush. Uh, it wasn't able to work out, <clears throat> excuse me, it wasn't able to work out in that case, like in that, like in that instance, because of the stupid ice tile. So I did calculate the movement out correctly, but the ice tile reduced his movement by one. That's unfortunate, uh, but you do really want that extra movement for a rush build. Now for the Flash of Steel build, oh, whoops, I started instead of uh, giving him his, well, let's uh, retreat. We need to change his items. Flash of Steel build, he does not want the movement bangle. He doesn't need it because you're just going to be using Flash of Steel with your team. So I'll show that as well. Just like I'll show it for like a turn. I'm not going to go through all this stuff again. All right, so for inventory, or I'm sorry. All right, unit placements. Let's go to Roland. Uh, we'll go. So he can still run res earring if he wants, but he won't need it when you're Flash of Steel building. He won't need movement bangle. Um, honestly, he should probably just run double strength bracelets if you have them. Let's see who has them. Someone has them. I have all these, <laughs> all, the, all the speed amulets from the one thing. Um, he doesn't need that. I'm not running him currently. And then we can change, we see another strength one. He can still run res if you want, but you probably should put it on a frontliner. Uh, he can also run accuracy, that can be fine. Let me see, let's give him a, uh, where's my accuracy stuff? I should have accuracy bracelet, all right. Accuracy bracelet and strength bracelet can be good. 
uh, because his accuracy can be – it's decent, but it's not like it, – sometimes he misses. It's, it can be like 80% at times. So this this is good for like a flash of steel build. Uh, you can also run speed on him, like speed bracelet. Um, okay, and then one thing we can do – we might as well just add Benedict just to like now things. To move him up. All right. And we can twofold turn and stuff like that. So one of the most basic combos with Flash of Steel build, like the reason you would want to use this is you want to use it to kill enemies that aren't shield users. So if you use it against shield users, it's just not good. Like you shouldn't, you should be using it to kill like basic units, mages, things like this. Um, so in the case of this map, most of the map is not shield users. Uh, so what you would do, so max will pass. So, all right, so right out of the gate, now you can move up in shield and uh, flash of steel things. Like you can play like this. And as long as you put tank on him, he can do this and it can be okay. But what you want to do is have enemies come to you and line them up. This is a more defensive play style with Roland. It's a safer play style. You generally will be doing uh, flash of steel on uh, in approaching enemies, hitting as many enemies as humanly possible, trying to get them to line up. And then you'll use four dragons against enemy bosses or big threats you want to kill. And then you'll be using uh, pushback from high ground or just a single target spike for 2 TP. And you generally want a battery because Flash of Steel is 3 TP. Uh, you can also use Julio to give you like the damage increase. Um, but yeah, it's more of a defensive thing. So we're actually going to play defensively for a few turns. And Benedict, he can Dragon Shield. Like he can just do something like this. So he's good. He, kind of, he kind of becomes like a durable backline unit that just kind of hangs out and, and contributes to damage. And then if you want him to, he can explode out and just start like running around things, getting opportune attack, four dragons, and just like single target, like nuke things. Like four dragons with opportune attack against an enemy in their back will generally kill them or put them at like 10%, 20% health. So all right, we're going to have Eridor provoke. He has one hit. Oh, <laughs> missed all of them. <laughs> he has twenty. He has uh, one hit of invincibility, so that kind of helps him. But <laughs> he missed all of them. That's unfortunate. Uh, all right, and then Julio can buff Roland. Julio is great for being a battery as well as increasing damage output of mages and damage or melee damage. So really good unit. All right, he's able to tank a magical hit. That's good. Uh, she's just gonna run away. All right, in this case, um, it's going to take a while for them to get to us, so we might as well start attacking them. Um, let's do this. So similar to Roland, Maxwell also has an, a rush-like ability. So they actually can be, they can work well together. I call it the Spear Bros, where they basically just, like, work off of each other, and they both use, like, Rush and Flash of Steel. So, like, in this case, for example... Um, I had Maxwell set up some damage, and then Roland can come in and follow up to, to like to help nuke this um, this uh, mage. Uh, but what I would want to do here is actually move to this tile because then I'll get an opportune attack off. So opportune attack, flash of steel triggers a follow up attack, and then we can have. Let's see, who has TP? All right, we'll, we'll intend a Maxwell in this case. We could intend him rolling, it doesn't really matter. And then he could run through getting back crits on one of them, triggering follow-up attack, putting this guy one shot, and then returning back to the team. So you can you can intend him, you can now, you can twofold turn, and you can rush through things once and then rush through them again, and then trigger front damage and then back damage. And both Roland and Maxwell are the spear bros, so they can both do this. Uh, Maxwell's run through, as, as long as it hits two things, will trigger two birds, one stone, and effectively cost two TP. Uh, but if he doesn't have three TP to begin with, he can't use it. So in this way, Roland's a little bit more flexible, because it's, it's just always two TP to rush uh, with the upgrade. So, alright, so Max, or Benedict, probably wants... What I'll do here is I'll just uh, inherit our Benedict so he can twofold turn. Roland, and then I'll show another way of using Flash of Steel. Uh, you just twofold turn him at six, um, and then you can like Flash of Steel rush for good damage. Uh, similarly, if you can just accomplish this with rush, it's usually better. So, 
All right, so these guys, these guys want a mess. Um, she'll just wait. <laughs> just, we'll just wait for them. That's fine. I'll probably do a separate video on just spear bros because that's like a real thing. All right, Eridor, make me proud. He, wow, 86% didn't get any of them on first use. That's like unbelievable. That's hard to believe. All right, she'll just chill out. All right, Benedict. Okay, so he will... He can twofold turn Roland because he has more TP than Maxwell right now. Um, yeah, that's the only problem with Maxwell. Like, I would rather it just be 2 TP. Because if he could spam this with Roland, they would be ridiculous. Like, they already are really good together. And obviously, Maxwell with battery is very viable. Uh, he can still do stuff like this. Just, like, get some chip in. And then trigger two birds. All right, and then what we'll do here... Uh, we're just going to battle cry just to show this. So what you can do... Actually, you can do crazy stuff like this. Like, you can completely loop around these. Um, let me see if I can do this right. If I started off behind them, that would be huge. I could crit them and then run around and then crit them again. Or actually, maybe I can. I think I can just straight up do this in this case with twofold turn. Now, I could, I could flash of steal them, but it would, it would be better to rush here, and you'll see why. Opportune attack, crit, wait, and then, oh, okay, if I had the movement bangle, this would work, or if I would have moved here, which I think I could have, so I just, like, slightly misplayed, uh, but now I can flash of steel these if I want, and the other thing that's good about flash of steel too is if I just want to retreat, you can also retreat while flash of stealing, so that's why it's more defensive in my opinion. It can be used offensively, but the fact that it costs so much TP and it can be used at range, in my eyes, makes it more defensive in nature but it can be used to nuke a bunch of things in the back obviously like if there's like five enemies lined up and you want to teleport rolling behind all of them and just like nuke them in the back for like 250 damage each for 3 tp that's totally legit so so he can do that so that's the flash of steel more defensive rush more offensive rush you generally want to loop around and rush through uh you can run around in flash of steel but the problem with that like if there's enemy backliners like archers and mages being behind a bunch of enemies sets you up for inherent combos, so rushing through them is usually better because then it returns you away from all these things, like it protects you from them in terms of position. So rushing through things while looping around them is a very like fundamental concept for Roland in general. And if you're ever like specifically going for the rush build, you know, you should know when flash of stealing makes more sense, and when you're doing the flash of steel build, you should know when to loop around and rush for spike damage. So, just some things to consider when running this unit. Alright, so in this case, we will retreat. And then I'll just show um, his final use case. So we have the Flash of Steel defensive build, where you're not putting him in danger often, and he should be safe. And then you have the Flash, and then the Rush build, where he should have Movement Bangle and Res Earring, just in case, and the Movement Bangle is to help him with the positioning. And then finally... Um, we can get, we can just give him, let's just get rid of this, let's just put speed on him. Let's just say you want him to just nuke things, uh, like a four dragons build. Now you might think you want to go for, uh, strength, and you could, but if you, like, when you're spamming four dragons, you want it to hit, so I'd say accuracy. You could run double accuracy, or like an accuracy and a speed, just to increase his turn order a little bit. Um, but for, you can run accuracy and strength as well. So I would say at minimum accuracy. So accuracy and strength, accuracy and speed, or double accuracy. So the idea behind this build is you're optimizing for, for four dragons use. So this is against this is better against bosses. This is better against maps where enemies are spread out. There's fewer enemies, but they're more durable. You just kind of run up to their back to try to trigger opportune attack and then four dragons them. That's the main idea. Uh, so we'll just do this. I will just pass. Uh, we're just going to battle cry just to speed things up. Um, so I'll just show it. He's just going to run up to a mage and just nuke it. Uh, then Benedict will just use now. Doesn't really matter. Okay, so we're not within range. We're going to light wave him. This, now this is assuming this is set up. I'm just doing this to save time. So let's say this is about like a reasonable distance to be. Like the, the, the far mages. So let's say you have some mages that are far away, right? This is the exact use case of uh, killing enemies with this. And also for bosses, it's just good because it does like 33 to 50% of their max health. 
So you trigger opportune attack. Now sometimes opportune attack will attack random things. So it actually might hit that thing, but we'll see. Yeah, it does. Sometimes it does that. But you can see here, even just a single use of this attack from the back, put this thing at one shot. Like, if we look at its health, it's it's at, like, 25% health. Uh, it's unfortunate that this was here, because he will just opportune attack whatever. If there's only one target, though, it'll always be the one target. So that's how it works. Um, just fast, fast acting medication. And then when he's done with his thing, he either needs to catch battery or just essentially look for more things to opportune attack. So he can kind of be like moving around like this, getting some damage off. Um, alternatively, you can always hit and then move. So he can just straight up kill this. So he can kill this and then just like rush over here using his uh, speed to rapidly reposition. That's one of the big upsides of Roland. Uh, he does have really good move and really good mobility. And when you use it correctly, you can minimize the damage he takes from enemies and also like make huge use of opportune attack. So he does have a higher skill floor than most units. So a lot of people tend to say he's bad because they don't understand how to optimally position him. And it does take some getting used to, but when you learn it, he's actually a very strong unit and he's an easy A tier for a damage carry type of role. Uh, but, okay, so let's actually talk about his durability now, because that's part of his, that's part of using him, that's like a more advanced concept for Roland. So, okay, so when you position any one of your units, you always have to be aware of what can hit them. So in this case, one thing can hit Roland. It's a battle mage, right? He'll take probably like 200 damage, and he won't die. So... You can get away with hyper-aggressive strats with him in rushing as long as you rush through things then have him run to safety or he runs and then rushes and then he's closer to your team and there's like, you know, CC or there's like a wall of your allies or there's some kind of condition. Like you should always have shutdown, you should always have tanks, you should always have all the things you need in, a, in the team comp. And when he is used correctly, he can just rush things in the back and spam things in the back with like Flash of Steel and nuke things in the back with four dragons. And he'll just be like a nuke on wheels. And you have to make sure that he is at like maximum in range of two to three things. If you're above, if he's in range, if he's in hitting range of more than three things, then you've messed up with him positionally. And this is true of like units like Julio, uh, like probably even Benedict to some degree, definitely Sarah Noah. Like if Sarah Noah can get hit by two mages and an archer, he's also dead. So it's not like, it's not like Roland has like abnormally low defenses. So in this case, just a single mage hitting him is totally fine. Uh, obviously I overextended Medina just to increase his turn order. This was just for this video. So just pretend like she doesn't exist, but you get the idea. Like you have to use his mobility to get in and out of situations and you have to use rush like with eight move from like good weather and movement bangle and rush, he can move 12 tiles. He has the best mobility in the game. Now, obviously if there's a lot of height that can mess it up, uh, but he still should be able to move those tiles. Like he still should be able to move like up to 12 tiles total, assuming that you rush on flat ground or end or move and then get to flat ground and then rush. So he has, he has absurd mobility. So it's just one thing to keep in mind. Um, I think he has the best horizontal mobility in the game. So if you don't know how to use it and then claim he's bad, then that's like a you problem because he should be able to kite almost anything in the game. He should be able to like run up to an enemy. Like if you twofold turn him, he can run up to an enemy, four dragons them, stab them again, kill them, and then run back to safety. And that's like the most basic use of him, just to like run out and spike a single target. Um, he can also spike a boss and, and retreat. Like he can, his his mobility is a huge asset, and being able to use it optimally is like a core thing to using him well. All right, so let's in tandem him just to kind of show some more stuff really quick. All right, so this is without. So this is just springing your stuff. This is just seven move. So you can see here, he's able to rush all the way up to this, and then push it back. Uh, for some decent damage. Uh, but here's, like, if I do rush, you can see here, I'm able to move 12 tiles by doing this. Now, obviously, that's suicidal, and you would never do that. Because <laughs> you're going to end up with a bunch, like, near a bunch of enemies. 
Uh, but that's like the idea that that's how you can make use of Rush. So even like this, you can see here, he effectively moves 12 tiles, which is absolutely insane. So now if he is twofold turned, if you use twofold turn on him and he has four to five TP, he can rush in. He runs, he can run com from complete safety, rush through three, like two to three enemies and then on his second twofold turn, he can rush back and then run back into safety. You can use Roland in like these like extreme ways and have him be huge value. Alternatively, if you want to be a little bit safer, he can always flash of steel from kind of like medium range while also mitigating the amount of enemies he's exposed to. Uh, in this case, it's kind of a bad example, even though this is like relatively safe because there's still a lot of things that can hit us. Uh, if we look at the turn order, we could probably have Eridor crowd control uh, turn 13 and 16 and 21. Then he's only getting hit by turn 14. So this would be relatively safe to do. Just flash of steal them from the front, deal some pretty decent damage. And then uh, once it's Eridor's turn, he can go to town. And then from this range, from this range, that's what one of the characters says, uh, you can moment of truth him, give him damage buff, now he can rush again. Similar to a mage, you know, if you give him extra TP, he like, he, he uh, tends to blow up the map. Uh, so let's have, all right, we can have, we can have one of these going off, get like a run through, we can run through it all. And then we can, we can just wait. Eridor can actually King Shield, which is even better because it's guaranteed. So he can just straight up King Shield. These are just like basic combos you can do. Just showing like, and I'm running Maxwell too, just for the hell of it. I'll just pass with her. Hopefully they don't kill her, they shouldn't. All right. Okay, and then if you want to be a little creative because it doesn't look like he can hit two things, but he definitely can because of his mobility, he can do this. And then he ends up, you know, uh, three things can hit him here. Uh, turn three, a turn six, and then a turn 15. He should be able to tank those two though. And you'd have him face toward the archer. So you can see there his opportune attack actually killed a third enemy that you wouldn't think he would hit. So sometimes that happens. So like he hit, he hit three targets. He's a, a lane nuker. And sometimes he'll deal that extra little bit of chip, you know, on the sides, but... Yeah, he's a really interesting unit. I actually enjoy running him. He's fun. He's fun to use. Uh, getting these setups isn't really too hard. Him and Maxwell, like they're like very similar uh, for like lane nuking. If you want to use Maxwell as a high jump spammer, that's also fine. Uh, that's like that you know that's just a different build or a different setup you're going to be going for. So so yeah, that's Roland. That's the advanced guide. I went over his three main use cases, showed them all. Um, I went over his abilities, how to use his abilities optimally, how to position him well, uh, looping, which is one of the most fundamental things to his playstyle, where you have him like a few tiles away from like an Eridor or like a tank or just the front lines in general, even if there is no front line tank, like as long as he's just like three to four tiles away from enemies and they're lined up, he can run around behind them, rush right through them, get back crits. You can twofold turn him to rush in and out, and then he can retreat and be completely safe while doing this. Like, I'm actually gonna show that because that's kind of neat. <laughs> so let's retreat really quick. I'll, I'll, I'll show that because that's like pretty sick to be honest. We'll, we'll switch back to rush build and I'll have him twofold turn, rush through enemies and then rush, rush out. So, all right, here's what we're gonna do. First, we're gonna move Medina so we can catch battery because she moves early. Okay, and then what we're gonna do uh, we're just going to go over the easiest way to switch items. Just hover over a unit, hit Y under placement. And then in this case, I'll give him uh, res. Oh, wait. I'll get the free one because it was on him before. We'll get a res earring. Res earring. Uh, you can run accuracy. I'm going to run the move, though, just to kind of show this because this will be fun. All right, then we'll start. Oh, I turned him up. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I accidentally turned him off. That's a bird. All right, we don't want the bird. All right, there we go. All right, so we're gonna battery everyone up front. And this is just because there's no regen on the first turn, so we'll see if we can do this correctly. We'll have to let wait for them to line up though, so we'll have to probably go through a turn. 
All right, so Maxwell will just sit. Uh, Roland will just sit. Uh, Benedict. All right, so he will twofold turn Roland. By the time it's his turn, he'll be able to nuke all these. Uh, Medina will just double items here. Just to get King Shield. Then Maxwell also gets high jump. We're going to go for like a high jump uh, double rush combo. Or potentially just double... Um, well, you can't double Flash of Steel. So, you just stab Medina. Or let's see. All right, they're kind of doing whatever. All right, we're going to do this. King Shield, that's fine. We just need the opportunity for them to be lined up, which is usually easy, easy to do. In the first couple of turns, you know, enemies are kind of like, in this case, they're all scattered. Uh, what do we want to do? We can, we can uh, Moment of Truth Roland, just to give him some extra damage. All right, those two are lined up. Those can be double rushed. All right, so let's do this. Oh, it's actually about to go off. All right, it's about to go down. Let's just say that. It's about to go down. Spear bros are about to get it get it going. All right, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, check this out. This is going to be... This, this might be sick. We'll see. We'll see how sick this is, if at all. All right, so we high jump in. In the middle of them. This this is like the pure this is like the purest form of spear bros. We have two full turn. We rush once. All right, that that just looked awesome to be honest. Not gonna lie. And then we rush again. Them dudes are dead as fuck. All right, and then we just run all the way back. That's pretty good. Let's be real. That's really good. Off of a high jump like that, dude. That's sick as fuck. Let's come on, come on, dude. Spear bros is real. You, fuck it, you give both of these dudes batteries, they go to town. Maxwell gets into a weird position for easy follow-up attacks. Roland fucking rushes through follow-up attack one, rushes through again follow-up attack two. That's hype as shit. You cannot tell me. Like, that's that's why I've made that Berserk thing with the fucking Forces songs. It's hype as shit to rush in and just start killing shit on a horse. But, yeah, alright. I think that's a, that's a good high note to end on. If you enjoyed this, definitely like the video and subscribe. I'm going to be doing advanced guides for each unit. Uh, some of the units I need to play with a little bit more, like just try to like, you know, see what kind of builds they can fit into. Some units I run a ton, so I know them like the back of my hand. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this. Definitely like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you think of this series, and peace.